Hi, I'm Paul Beckwith, University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. I do a lot of educational videos to inform the public on the risks and uncertainties that we face from abrupt climate change. So please have a look at my website, paulbeckwith.net, and please consider uh, supporting my work. There's a please donate button there. So in this video, I'm gonna discuss some of the fundamentals of our climate system. I teach climatology to second year geography university students. And on a recent midterm, I asked, describe the climate system of the earth starting at the sun. I told the students the question before the exam. So they had time to uh, prepare answers. And I was looking basically for understanding. So it's only fair that I attempt to answer this question myself. So here's something verbatim that I wrote November 2nd, 2009 for an application. The climate of our planet is a fascinating and extremely complex phenomena. Photons follow a black body radiation frequency distribution centered in the visible region of the electromagnetic spectrum. They originate in the sun and they propagate linearly and more or less unattenuated across the vacuum of space and impinge on the various levels of the Earth's atmosphere where they are selectively absorbed or transmitted depending on the composition and the spectroscopic properties of the molecular constituents at various altitudes. The incoming light radiation that is not reflected or absorbed by clouds and aerosols is transmitted and then reaches the Earth's oceans and land masses and is differentially absorbed or reflected depending on the surface albedo or reflectance. Light intensity reaching any given point on the Earth's surface is dependent on the geometry of the Earth-Sun orbital system. This intensity depends on the solar output which can fluctuate slightly in cycles due to sunspot activity the position of the Earth in its yearly elliptical orbit around the Sun with the slowly changing eccentricity, the tilt of the Earth's rotational axes and the precession or wobble in this tilted axis, and the rotation of the Earth, all of which act on different time scales, varying over many orders of magnitude. Any location where the light is absorbed causes an increase in the frequency of oscillation in stretching, rotation, or bending modes of the molecules which are macroscopically measured by a temperature increase. These molecules in turn emit less energetic photons at a lower frequency in the infrared, which are sent out from the molecules in all directions, including back up into the atmosphere. Certain molecular components of the atmosphere, including water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide, and others, are selectively excited by this lower energy radiation and absorb the photons, preventing them from radiating back out into space. The energy is thus trapped inside the Earth's system in a greenhouse-like fashion. The average temperature of the Earth's fluids, ocean and atmosphere, and the land masses is determined by the equilibrium level where the incoming energy from the sun and the radiative heat losses back out into space are balanced. The differential heating rate, large heating at the equator and progressively less heating toward the poles, drives the thermodynamic heat engine that causes the Earth's climate. The main mechanism to move heat from the warm equatorial regions to the colder poles following the first law of thermodynamics is the convection of the fluids. Clearly the heat capacity of water is much larger than that of the atmosphere. So the ocean conveyor system does the bulk of the heat transfer. Actually, that's not correct. Um, two thirds of the heat is transferred via the atmosphere, one third via the ocean. This was written in 2009. Ocean currents are in turn also dependent on the location of the continents and the rotation of the Earth. The net result of all of these processes generates the climate of the planet. 
Further complicating the issue is the dependence of the concentrations of greenhouse gases on the system temperature. Water vapor, the most abundant greenhouse gas, is input into the atmosphere in many ways, such as evaporation of oceans and other bodies of water, flora transpiration, and even ice sublimation, and can end up in low altitude clouds, which have a negative forcing, or high altitude clouds, which have a positive forcing on temperature, which feeds back positively to further increase the concentration. Carbon dioxide enters the atmosphere from fauna respiration, ever increasing human burning of fossil fuels, and industrial and agricultural practices, as well as from aerobic decomposition of organic matter. It is removed by a rainfall absorption and plant photosynthesis and chemical weathering of rock, but it has a century-long residence time in the atmosphere. Methane enters the atmosphere from industrial and agricultural practices, as well as from anaerobic decomposition of organic matter, and with significant temperature rise emissions from ocean floor cat clathrates or northern permafrost, could dwarf all human-generated emissions. The methane clathrate gun. Fossil records and other long-term proxies indicate that the Earth has cycled through many periodic and non-periodic extremes of temperature, ranging from a hothouse world in which no ice existed on the planet, and temperatures were much higher than present day, to a snowball Earth world in which thick glacial ice locked the planet in a frozen state, likely only to be released by a buildup of volcanic emissions of greenhouse gases over a long period of time, with the usual chemical weathering methods of removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere halted due to a lack of liquid precipitation and almost no rock exposure. Okay, so just in summary, this was the response to the question, describe the climate system of the Earth starting at the sun. And the answer I wrote verbatim, uh, November 2nd, 2009. So we've learned a lot about the climate system. We understand quite a bit about it, but there's loads of surprises that are in store for us. And in fact, since this response was written, the, the rate of change of climate change has surprised just about everybody, except for, you know, a handful of people like myself that have been studying abrupt climate change and recognize that the stable climate state and the idea of slow linear changes in climate um, is, is, is incorrect. Um, it, you know, it's valid for most of the time, but there are periods like we're undergoing today where you get abrupt climate change, where all bets are off. And our abrupt climate change today clearly is triggered by the extreme Arctic temperature amplification, which is occurring because the Arctic is getting much, much darker. And this is disrupting the heat transfer from the equator to the North Pole which is done via the atmosphere in the ocean. So that heat transfer is affected because the temperature gradient is lower. So there's less heat transferred. So this is affecting the ocean currents and it's affecting the atmospheric jet streams. And it's causing this disruption of global weather patterns around the world. So please um, peruse my website paulbeckwith.net. Have a look at other videos that I've done. I've covered many, many different topics. And if there are topics, there, I'm certain that there are topics that you want to hear about that I haven't covered, and email me or send me a message on my website, and I'll try to make sure that they go on my list of future videos so that uh, I try to explain my views, my knowledge, scientific knowledge, and my sort of gut feeling on what the climate system um, is doing now, what it will do in the near term and far term future, uh, based on what it has done in the past. So thank you for your attention.